Welcome to your Crusades homework. One side of your paper looks like this. You have six boxes that you are going to fill with notes. The other side of your paper looks like this. It's a map of Europe. Now the bulk of tonight's homework is going to focus around a city called Jerusalem. And Jerusalem is a holy city for Jews, Christians, and Muslims. They each have their own synagogues and churches and mosques there. It's a very special place, and if you're wondering where Jerusalem is, well, it's right there, just off the coast of the eastern Mediterranean Sea. Now, there are some other cities around Europe that played an important role in the Crusades, but you really, you really don't need to know about them yet. The thing you need to know is that Jerusalem was the ancient city of the Jews, um, and they controlled that city for thousands of years, until 1095, when a group of Turks, called the Seljuk Turks, left their homeland and sacked Rome. Now, many cities have been sacked over the years, but the sacking of Jerusalem, uh, it, it kind of resonated with Christian Europeans. They were very upset about it, because the Seljuk Turks were Muslims. So the Muslims are now in control of Jerusalem. And a year after taking over, they passed a law that banned Christianity and Judaism from Jerusalem. This made the leader of the Christians very angry. The Pope, he decided to give a speech. And, and the message of his speech was that Christian armies should go and fight against the Muslims and liberate Jerusalem. And to motivate the, the, the Christians to form armies and go fight and possibly die in battle, to motivate them, he promised them that if they helped liberate Jerusalem, they could um, get into, into heaven. So, this was pretty big motivation for, for the Europeans, and, and crusader armies popped up all over Europe. They were chomping at the bit. They could not wait to walk all the way to Jerusalem. That's three or 4,000 miles of walking, and they couldn't wait to do it. And in just three years' time, they had walked to Jerusalem, they had fought battles, and they actually kicked the Muslims out, and recaptured Jerusalem. So, Jerusalem was now controlled by the Christians. You'd think that the Christians would be happy, but unfortunately for them, the Muslims counterattacked. And this made the Christians unhappy. So, they counterattacked, and that made the Muslims angry. So, the Muslims, while they counterattacked, which means the Christians had to counterattack, so the Muslims, again, they counterattacked. And then the Christians, they had to counterattack, and I think you start to see the pattern. All right, so I'm going to give you some notes for your cold, hard facts about the Crusades. I'm going to give you some notes for the First, Second, Third, and Fourth Crusades. And I'm going to give you some notes about the long-term effects of the Crusades. Please copy those down into those boxes. All right, last thing I want you to do is flip that paper over to the side with the map. <clears throat> Here are some cities that played important roles in the Crusades. Okay, Jerusalem, Damascus, Antioch, Constantinople, Zara, Vienna, Venice, Rome, Lyon, Paris, London. Um, these are important cities scattered around Europe, and we're going to play a little Connect the Dot game. What you need is four colors. And what we're going to label are the routes of travel for the first four crusades. So I'm going to do the first crusade in red. And you can see that it started in the middle of France. And when they got to Lyon, they split up into two groups, one headed north, one headed south. 
And they met in Western Greece and then continued on to Constantinople, where they marched across Turkey to Antioch. Now, here's a little story about Antioch. Like I said, thousands of these soldiers were starving to death as they traveled to Palestine. Well, when they got to Antioch, they fought a battle and they killed many Muslims. They, they captured the city of Antioch. And the Christians, who were starving to death, they ate some of the dead Muslims. And uh, that infuriated the Muslims. Um, a lot of Christians back home, they were like, yeah, we can't believe that had to happen. This is kind of gross. But overall, the First Crusade was successful because they captured Jerusalem. The Second Crusade, I'm going to draw in blue. It started in Paris, continued over into Germany, down through Vienna, Austria to Constantinople. That seems like a pretty popular place during the Crusades. And then it's sort of like they lost their compass or they needed a map or something because they kind of zigzagged across Turkey. They forgot that the, the quickest way to get between two places is a straight line. They kind of took this long route around through Antioch, but they captured Damascus um, briefly before being defeated by the Muslims and pushed back further north. So the Second Crusade, not as successful for the Christians because they were unable to capture Jerusalem. During the Third Crusade, which I'm going to draw in orange, that's when Richard the Lionheart, he started uh, marching, or I'm sorry, sailing his army from England all the way through the Mediterranean to Jerusalem. He picked up a few um, crusaders from Paris and a few more from western France and eastern Germany, and together they combined forces in Jerusalem to fight against Saladin. And remember, King Richard and Saladin, after fighting each other for a few years, they decided to form a truce and share Jerusalem. Seems like a good idea, but it couldn't last forever, which takes us to the Fourth Crusade. I'm going to draw this in purple. It started out up here in Venice, and it traveled down the coastline towards Zara. And when they got to Zara, they were out of money. So they actually attacked Zara, which was a Christian city, which infuriated the Pope in Rome. But they attacked a Christian city in Zara to get money so that they could continue on their crusade to try to get to Palestine and recapture Jerusalem. But the farthest they got was Constantinople, and the, the wheels kind of fell off the whole deal. That's as far as they got. So, please draw these four routes that the crusaders used. Please use a different color for each crusade. And please include a legend or a key so that I know, you know, red is the first crusade and blue is the second crusade and so on and so forth for the other, two, the other two crusades. Please make your map nice and neat. Make sure your six boxes on the other side of the page are completely filled and uh, bring those to class so we can sign off one of your menu items. Goodbye.